English language teaching under the cover. Hello and welcome to ELT under the covers teaching methodology. In today's video, we are going to be looking at a method that is used broadly and in many different ways. We've put it under the term as dialogic teaching. Before we get into that, introductions. I'm Neil, our team teacher. Hello everybody, it's Professor Rich. Dialogic teaching, when, when I say that to you, what brings to my, what does that bring to mind and how have you used that uh, in your classes well the the term that i personally use that's most similar to this would be dialogic storytelling mm -hmm. and to me that means having the overall guiding arc of the class to be a teacher led story mm -hmm. with interactive elements mm -hmm. the story provides the majority of the language input from which the target language will be analyzed. And one of the reasons why I like it so much is because it's highly engaging in terms of everyone wants to know what happens next in the story. And that can be used as a sort of fundamental and intrinsic motivational element for the students. Interesting. Um, I've not really done so much dialogic story telling uh, in the classroom. Mostly my perspective uh, has come from uh, being a parent and one thing that they do in um, pre-K, you know, kindergarten and preschool is they do dialogic reading. So that thing where you read the story and um, use the story as uh, a means to talk about um, uh, other things so you know picture books that have the story in there you read with your kid and you know you ask them questions about the story or pictures that they see they ask questions about you and it's kind of like a, a conversation as you go through the story very similar I feel to what you describe as well but I think from here what would be a good jumping off point would be to have a look at uh, a bit of a background of dialogic teaching, kind of looking back at the ages and the the breadth and broadness of what that could mean. And then we can kind of take it from there and uh, put more of the focus on it being within the classroom. Uh, so let's, uh, let's have a look. The dialogic teaching method. Dialogic education is learning that takes place through dialogue. It typically involves dialogue in the form of face-to-face -face talk, including questions, questioning, and exploring ideas within what's called a, a dialogic space. It might sound very academic, and it has its roots in ancient societies where they would talk about lots of concepts uh, in a very academic way, but it can actually be as simple as having a conversation about a book. It is one of the primary means of teaching that I do with my toddler. As we read a book together, I leave a dialogic space for my child to explore the book and ask me questions or make comments. And I will do the same as well, often promoting further exploration and mining of the book. At the beach, we go for a boat ride. Wow. Daddy, he's grabbing the octopus. He's grabbing the anchor and the octopus is holding the anchor down. Hmm. What are they looking at? You're watching a letter and a stop. <laughs> oh no, I thought they were trying to eat a bird. Did I try? What, does it look like an angry shark or a happy shark? A happy shark. Yeah, do you think a happy shark is going to eat them? No. No. Yeah, I see a tree, so we are not we are taking this food. Yeah, that's right. How many potato pals are on the boat? There are two. By teaching through the opening of a shared dialogic space, dialogic learning it draws the students into the co-construction of shared knowledge by questioning and 
building on the the dialogue and the thing that you are discussing rather than just simply learning a set of facts you are questioning going deeper furthering understanding exploring in different avenues and different perspectives which the students will engage with so rich uh, dialogic it's very it's very broad you know uh, I, I i've uh, uh, subscribed dialogic teaching because i think it's it kind of covers all bases because you've got the storytelling the reading you know with the younger kids it's it's you know people might think of it as like circle time where they all gather around in the class and the, the teacher reads a book and asks questions and stuff um but i'm more interested uh in you know the the adult version that that you've practiced uh, along with jd <clears throat> um and i'm hoping that you can kind of elaborate on that a little bit more yeah yeah, so uh, if we say that adult, basically what you mean is non-infant. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah so we're, yeah. we're, we're talking about kind of, because, you know, adolescents, teenagers, adults, I think uh, dialogic storytelling works great. Just to make another comment about the kind of broad definition of dialogic teaching, mm -hmm. uh, for me, that's really communicative language teaching with the sort of, sort of Adrian Underhill peer-to-peer uh, -peer relationship um, focus on communication. Just the, it's just that general way of teaching as opposed to the chalk and talk mm -hmm. type of model. That's how I would see that um, being that broad. Whereas when I think of dialogic storytelling, yeah, I think of it as a lot, a, a lot kind of more narrow than that. It's not just sort of uh, an open conversation mm -hmm. with some content sort of tagged on. Mm -hmm. It's more directed in the sense that the teacher will have these kind of interspersed activities prepared mm -hmm. and the story is sort of gradually revealed with different kinds of activity going on between the kind of story points and often the 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 for me when i do it mm -hmm often the kind of storytelling parts are actually really quite short, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe a minute maximum, you know, so quite short things. Sometimes it can just be a few sentences, mm -hmm. you know, like I've got one where I sort of start off with, and you know, a lot of this stuff that I'm going to talk about is credit Jamie Keddy. Um, you know, I, I, I started off with, although this is my story that mm -hmm. a lot of the thing, a lot of the kind of framework of it is, is, is from Jamie Keddy. So, uh, I start off the story with, um, so the other day uh, I went to the supermarket and I did something really weird, which I've never done before in my life. It's the first time I've ever done it. Have you ever been to a supermarket and had a weird experience, right? So that's how I, that's the kind of my start of the lesson. And I got that from Jamie in a, in a workshop where he, you know, he said um, his favorite Thing to what, do was what was the experience rich what was the experience his favorite his, fa his favorite thing to, to do is to say i'm going to tell you a story but first i'm going to ask you a question you know uh, so i always do that it's I always, human I, clickbait I, I, I always, rich i don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i always i always try and think in those terms that i want i want a question that yeah that kind of gets people into it Hmm. So then, they, you know, people talk about all kinds of weird things. Oh, one time I was in a <laughs> supermarket and I saw someone dressed up like a demon or, you know, all kinds mm. of just weird things. You, you, it's great stuff. Um, but you can see that that's quite a short little thing. And then they get into it with the warmer. And then the, the next couple of lines that I might say was, well, um, I, was, I was going around the super supermarket and I didn't want to buy too many things. I just bought uh, some toilet rolls, some bread and some cheese. Uh, right. Um, and when I got to the checkout and I paid for this stuff, I noticed that there was something weird um, going on with with one of these products. Mm -hmm. you know, what do you think it was? And what do you think? You know, you go on and on and on with mm -hmm. that stuff. By the way, the story itself is actually not that interesting. If I just told you the story, you'd just be like, oh, that's just that's a shit story. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> But the fact that you put in all these little bits and bobs like makes it intriguing. You're like mm -hmm. weird things, supermarket, the first thing he's done in his life, da 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 da, da. Mm -hmm. And of course, all these great languages coming out as well. Um, in fact, the story itself is actually just that I returned uh, a packet of uh, 20 toilet rolls to mm -hmm. the supermarket. And the reason is because um, it was... 
I think it was 21 pounds for 20 toilet rolls. Mm -hmm. And they were XL toilet rolls or whatever. But I was just so when I looked at the receipt after paying for it, I was so offended by the idea that I was paying over a pound per toilet roll that I just I took it back and returned it straight immediately. Yeah. It's the first time I've ever returned anything in a supermarket, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, that's that's the story. Mm -hmm. um, not really that exciting, but when you do it as part of a dialogic story, it is quite exciting. And the students come up with all kinds of like weird things that they've experienced as well, and all kinds of weird predictions as well. Like, because they have to obviously predict like what the weird thing is that I've d that I did at some point, mm -hmm. you know. And they they come up with all kinds of strange things. Oh, you stole something, or you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, it's 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 brilliant. So um, you know, you get all kinds of really interesting creative input. You get all this natural language coming out. And um, really, it's it's as much about those little activities as it is the story, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And mm -hmm. Jamie, Jamie is really good at coming up with those like interspersed activities. Mm -hmm. And I, I've kind of been, um, you know, I, I basically steal a lot of uh, his kind of models for that. Uh, like, um, you know, he has he has one where he'll just throw up like a word cloud of phrases. Mm -hmm. You know, and it could be all kinds of, it could be stuff like, you know, strong smelling cheese, you know, a, a red apple, um, a smelly dog, a suspicious sound, you know, it'd just be like a list of these things. And then it's like, what do you think happens in this story? Oh, you know? nice. And then the, the, like these really interesting phrasal chunks. But mm -hmm. It's just like, what do you think happens? You know, um, and I love that. He also uses uh, drawing a lot or used to anyway in his older lesson streams. And, um, you know, I do, I do that now, uh, I would say probably about once every month, I will do a class that involves some drawing really gets people into, it's a really, it's a great way of getting people into the story. They put their own version on there. Um, and, uh, you know, it gives them this sort of personal attachment to what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's interesting cause you said he often uses videos, and I think he did go through a phase of being really into that. Um, interestingly enough, the, I think the my favorite uh, Jamie Keddy lessons are, are actually ones that, that don't use video. Uh, but what? But but when I do like the way he uses videos, when he uses techniques like um, having people listen to the video without seeing it, mm -hmm. and that can provide some really interesting uh, instances of things going on. Mm -hmm. Um, like for example, oh, or, or describing what's going to happen in the video mm -hmm. um, before they watch it, mm -hmm. and uh, and then having them listen to it without watching it, mm -hmm. and say, you know, do you think what you thought was happening is happening? One example for that, he has a thing with American Psycho, um, and he says, you know, uh, he, he doesn't tell. Obviously, he doesn't say anything about it being American Psycho. He says. Um, Right, we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna watch a uh, a scene from a story, um, and it involves four men in a room, and they're all comparing something. Mm -hmm. What do you think they're comparing? <laughs> uh, you know, and, yeah, yeah, it's great, isn't it? It's great, and and there is kind of uh, I don't know if Jamie would uh, take take it. Probably he'd probably accept this that there's 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 sometimes some kind of innuendo in uh, his stuff and i think that's part of the kind of hook as well mm -hmm. you know um i mean one of the spicier stories that he told during a teach training conference was about uh a misunderstanding where he thought his postman was trying to sell him drugs uh, but actually it was just uh, a misunderstanding about a name uh, in in spanish which means cocaine mm -hmm. uh, it can mean cocaine as, as a kind of slang word uh, but it was actually just someone's name um and another one you know also yeah the idea of four men being in a room and comparing something it's kind of oh what what well this is a bit weird um and uh that that the scene of course that they actually that that's based on is the american psycho uh business card mm -hmm. scene yeah where they're comparing the business cards um you know and that scene it is it, you know there is there is obviously innuendo in that scene isn't there i mean mm -hmm. He start, uh, Bateman starts like, you know, panting almost when he's like looking at um, Paul Allen's card or whatever, and his hands shaking or whatever, and then he, he kind of drops it. Single, <laughs> single sweat bead goes down his face. Yeah, I remember. No, J Jamie, yeah. Jamie's masterful. And I, I really like the, uh, the, the way that you can talk and describe and explain 
uh, what he does. Because I think one of the things that gets missed out with um, dialogic uh, storytelling, reading, teaching as a whole is that the 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 aspect of engagement that that comes with that when it's done masterfully well so every teacher will have done dialogic teaching uh, at some point especially if you're a, a language teacher um so do you know like will we will i i cannot think of a language teacher that would have not done a lesson where they've got the book covers and they've got they ask the students what do you think this book's about what genre is it and stuff like that but the way that it's presented um is not as engaging as the way that that jamie does it uh even though it's kind of the same ilk you know uh I, the, what I always take away and what I took away from the interview that we did with Jamie uh, and when you talk about him and when I've read video telling and looked at images uh, as well is that it's not really about the story. It, it is about that dialogic engagement and I'm not mm. even sure dialogic really <clears throat> describes it well. I, I think it should be something you know, more akin to emotional <laughs> manipulation or intrigue <laughs> in Simon, a hu human click clickbait teaching or what I don't I don't know what you yeah. I, I can't quite get the the word precisely. Maybe you can help with that. <laughs> well yeah it's it's something to do with it's something to do with the hook, isn't it? Yes. Um, I, I don't think I'd call it the thing is about clickbait is Clickbait is when you kind of advertise something as being not what it is in, in, in a way, you know, it's like, I suppose a, a clickbait story would be like the best thing that's ever happened to me happened last week. It was mind blowing. And I saw something I've never seen before in my life, you know, and then, you know, then I tell the story about, returning my toilet roll at the supermarket but it, um, it, it, you know, yeah but it kind of does sound a little bit similar. There's a, no, there's a slight, <laughs> there's a slight element of that, but, um, but the, but the story is kind of funny as well. You know, when I get to the bit where I return the toilet roll, you know, people do laugh and stuff. So it's not entirely clickbaity, but I, I see what you mean. It's like marketing think... for teaching. You're, you're like, you're marketing I... the, the, the lesson, the, the, yeah. you're marketing the learning almost. It's weird. Weird I, in a I good think way. It's, I think it's perfectly fair to call it storytelling. Yeah. But, and I think a good storyteller mm -hmm. is like, you know, a good storyteller sells the story. And I think one of the reasons that it works so well is because it's it taps into something about people um, and our ancestors because that's yeah. how we learned for so long. So it's yeah. just like, it's like there's a, a biological trigger in there that he sort of, you know, you go... Have you ever blah 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 yeah. blah blah blah? I think there's a, I think there's a number I think there's a number of things it taps into mm. as a as a human you know affective depth mm. and uh, communication and yeah it's kind of our history of storytelling and stuff and yeah I mean if we think about kind of famous storytellers mm -hmm. like there's the there's the poets uh, Michael Rosen right yeah uh, who's like ultra famous because he became an internet meme and, oh the uh, and, Oh, <clears throat> reading, uh, we're going on a bear hunt, I think. Is that Rosen? It could be. The, 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 the video that I'm super familiar with is Chocolate Cake. Oh, okay. Do you know that one? No. Well, it's, it's, it's I mean, it's a pretty simple story. Mm -hmm. It's just about him as a boy. He loved his chocolate cake and, you know, he was totally obsessed by when his mum made a chocolate cake. And he'd, you know, he'd, he'd be able to get like a piece of it in his lunchbox. And one day when she made one, he decided to creep downstairs and have a look at it. And he crept downstairs and had a look at it and then saw some crumbs and had some of the crumbs and then saw a little bit was uneven at the side and kind of sliced that off. And then I realized he cut a little bit too much. So he, oh, cuts a bit yeah. he ends up fucking scoffing the chocolate cake. <laughs> And uh, going upstairs. And then you slag, Rosen. Day. You glutton. Yeah, the next day, the next day, getting bollocked by his mum. And um, you know, that's a pretty basic story, but the way he tells it is like it's really, really, really like over the top. 
Yeah. You know, the whole thing of him, he gets out of bed. I was creeping across the floorboard, floorboards. Watch out for the creaky one. Did they wake up? You know, yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, that's basically what we're talking about, isn't it? It's like you're overselling it. Yeah. And the, I think, you know, I, I think Jamie would agree with this. I've heard him say things along these lines that, you know, a, a good storyteller can do that. And, um, you know, the, there's a there's a skill to being a good storyteller, mm -hmm. which I think is part of what his current product is about, isn't it? The the, the, the fishbowl. I think mm -hmm. part of the, the thing that he does with that is he runs these storytelling courses, mm -hmm. uh, kind of helping people become better storytellers. And I, and I agree with that. I think I think that's a fair label for yeah. it. It's, it's being being a good storyteller and bringing that into your class in terms of this engagement. And then the other element of it is giving it a language-based rationale. Mm -hmm. um, so finding ways to get the language uh, out of the story mm -hmm. um, and, you know, kind of being remembered and used by the students. Yeah. Um, I think we've teased this uh, enough. You know, we've created that intrigue enough that we can just jump into one of uh, Jamie's lessons that he shared on uh, his uh YouTube channel and you know, it might yeah. have been from Lesson Stream. I, I can't remember. Um, and we can kind of see it in action and maybe we can kind of go over it and pick it apart a little bit. One of the masters of dialogic teaching is uh, someone we've had on our show, uh, Jamie Keddy. And he uses a range of authentic materials from stories, images, and videos to engage his classes in a dialogic way. Uh, he calls this dialogic storytelling and one of the primary means that he does it is through video. So let's take a look at one of his video telling lessons. And remember to check out LessonStream.com for this lesson and many, many more. Let me tell you about this video. I'm just going to adjust my volume a little bit there. We start somewhere in the USA, I'm not sure where, somewhere in the USA, it's a very beautiful day, the sun is shining, and there are five people standing around the swimming pool. What do you think they're wearing? Bikini. Good guess, what else, a bikini? Swimming suit. Swim Swimming suit, good, what else? <laughs> what would you say, Jodie? Bikini, swimming suit, sunglasses? Goggles. Goggles. Googles. 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 Love it. You'd expect that, wouldn't you? You'd expect it. Yeah, it was nice, wasn't it? A nice little bit of uh, quick, quick little bit of on the spot correction. Yeah. Uh, with a, a nice little thing that would sort of stick in people's heads. Mm -hmm. Looks a bit silly doing this, and then you know this. Great. Uh, relating it to Google as well. Everyone knows Google, so they'll remember it based on that. Yeah, I like it. And um, this idea of getting people to describe sort of either what people look like or what they're wearing mm -hmm. in a story where you haven't told them. I really like that. Um, or, you know, another, another version of that is getting them to describe the sort of scene of what something is like, mm -hmm. like, okay. Um, so our story starts in, um, in a forest, a, a very thick, deep forest. What does the forest look like? And you can even give, you can give people options as well. Like, is it, is it law? Is it light or mm -hmm. dark? Is it, 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 are there sounds of animals or is it quiet and ask different students mm -hmm. kind of like, what about your forest? Is your forest quiet? Mm -hmm. Is your forest light? You know? Mm -hmm. um, and it's great because it gets people making these images and sort of getting into the story in a way that if you just tell the story, they might not necessarily. Yeah. Do you know what, you what it is, is uh, it's investment and um, it's actually uh, a psychological trick. So, um, think about it in terms of owning a car like you get given a car by your parents for your birthday you're like this is great I got a car you really you love the car but it's different 
owning a car that was given to you by your parents and then owning a car that you saved mm. up for for two years every single penny you made that then you know like the person that's got the car from their parents you know they take care of the car but that person that's you know put you know two years worth of work and saving you know that that car is their baby that car you know like they're polishing it they're cleaning it up because the investments there and i think when what he's doing here it plays upon that trick it gets people to invest in the story and they kind of start to feel like ownership is a part of that story they it it's pictured in their head and the picture is not something that he's painted but it's something that's created from themselves uh, within themselves mm. yeah i think that's i think that's definitely i think that's definitely part of it mm -hmm. um and it, it's uh it's it also kind of speeds up because you know when you're reading a story you do get these mental images mm -hmm. but then when people start asking you questions about them it sort of speeds up that kind of creation of those mental images you know because when someone says to me okay so there's a there's so our stories in the united states and it's a swimming pool and there's four people standing around a swimming pool you know i don't necessarily immediately make an image and start diving into it but then when someone says what are they wearing do you think mm -hmm. then it kind of does put you into it a bit more mm -hmm. um so yeah I, I i i really do i do like that i did notice one thing though that in this video he didn't he didn't kind of preface, he didn't actually ask some kind of a question. Well, I guess that this is sort of it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. No, well, this uh, is we, we, don't know, we don't know what kind of preamble he's done before this, you know, so. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's, let's move on. Mm -hmm. But they're not, Helen. They're not wearing a bikini. They're not wearing bikinis. Oh, it's the they're twist. Not they're not wearing goggles. They're not Next, wearing the sun. prestige. <laughs> Just Cowboy boots. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Halloween costumes. Let me tell you, there's five people, two women, three men. One of the women is wearing a long yellow dress. Mm -hmm. And she's holding a bunch of flower. 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 The other woman is wearing a long white dress. White dress. Oh. Two of the men are wearing <laughs> smart dark suits. What's happening here? Wedding. 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 Yeah. Can you identify it's five coming. people? Who's the most important woman? Right. 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 Who's the most important man? With the flowers. Yeah. Mandy. <laughs> Who's the most important woman? Yeah. Who's the most important man? Jody. Oh, nice. That's interesting. I might adopt something like that. He's got a symbol to tell the class that he's nominating and he doesn't want other people to speak mm -hmm. while he's interacting with that one student. Mm -hmm. um, and he actually did it before he nominated yeah. as well, which uh, I really like that because it is something that grinds my gears a bit when you get because the thing is, you do want to encourage peer-to-peer -peer correction, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, you're the teacher and you really know how to do good kind of one-to-one -one interaction. So when you start, the amount of times that uh, if you don't train them, you start, you ask a question and even nominate a student, someone else just says it mm -hmm. because they don't, they don't wait long enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes a while, especially with weaker students. They need a good amount of time mm -hmm. um, to, to, to answer a question. I actually heard some... Uh, some research on this recently, which stipulated that 10 seconds is the amount of time, which is a long time to have silence. Yeah. By the way, you yeah. ask a question, it's just, and wait 10 seconds of silence. And the chance that another student will be climbing out their seat to answer is very high. Mm -hmm. uh, so to have a symbol or to have something that says, right, the only person who should talk now is the person I'm nominating. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, I need to do something like that. Yeah. Uh, mm. You could two possibilities. Sorry, Neil. Do you have no comment? No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Bride, groom, oh, or more bride, common, groom, groom. Or groom. 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 Who's the groom's helper? The groom's helper, the assistant, best friends, the groom. A 
Shall I tell you? The best man. The best man. The best man. Who is the bride's helper? The bride's maid. Who is the fifth person? The preacher. 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 Do we prefer the priest or the picture? Priest. I don't know the difference. <laughs> they said preacher. Be they said preacher because he's done his um, mamas and the papas lesson with this class before, oh, okay. where you where you where you teach specific vocabulary preacher. Mm. Um, so that's 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 why they said preacher. Just I, 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 I think uh, a preacher might it may or may not be ordained. I think a priest is ordained. I just see preacher as being like um, a kind of slightly archaic um united states term especially it's kind of used in the southern united states isn't it yeah you know it kind of has that i don't know um i don't know dallas type <laughs> feel about it and kind of almost wild westy yeah uh, but, yeah uh, but, we're getting but, into but, the weeds with that though really we are we are getting into the weeds yeah <laughs> and um that you know there's arguments about how specific you have to be with with your vocabulary um, and you know, I think it'd be it's absolutely fine because it has it serves a communicative purpose, and over the time, the yeah. students will naturally, uh, contextually adapt uh, to the, to to the use of that. Uh, but anyway, I just I just find it interesting that uh, you know, as soon as someone said that, I was like, oh, he's done the mamas and the papas class with them, <laughs> uh, which is one of my favourites. Which is one available on Lesson Stream. Yeah, I prefer the old version. Um, oh no! Come on, Rich! Really... Come on, Rich! You can't just throw <laughs> yeah. that in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I can't remember why, but like I, I remember I, I tried the new one, and um, I was kind of like, oh, there's something just a little bit, something, something missing from this. It's still very, what, very good though. It, he, he just prefers was, the other version. Oh folks. yeah, yeah, just, no, it just is. To be clear. But yeah, there was. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> but yeah, there was something. I can't, I'm not even sure exactly what it was, but I still, I still, that's one of the classes that's still like just in my repertoire and, uh, you know, I'll just whip it out, whip it out oh, in any God. particular moment. You know, if someone asked me to cover a class, that's, that's one of many possibilities that might be whipped out. <laughs> anyway. The priest. Everybody look at me. Bride and groom. Bride and the groom. Best man. Best man. Bridesmaid. Bridesmaid. Don't forget the priest. Don't forget the priest. Bride and groom. Bride and groom. Best man. Best man. Bridesmaid. Bridesmaid. Don't forget the priest. Don't forget the priest. Bride and groom. Bride and groom. Everybody, bride and groom. Bride and groom. Best man. Best man. This has got it. It's got to be a, a a rhyme or a story or a, sorry, a song. It's got to be something musical. By the way that he's done that. Mm -hmm. Well, he is a trained musician, so. <laughs> True. Yeah. Classical pianist. Who would have thought? That was that was such a revelation. Yeah. No. And, and he's like, oh, do you think that informed? He's like, nah. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. And, and here he is. Bye. Um, please. <laughs> okay, there. Sure. <laughs> this is the part of the wedding where you take your vows. What does that mean? You take your vows. When you take your vows, you take your vows. What does that mean? Bride and the groom are taking their vows. You're taking your vows. The bride and the groom are taking their vows. What does that mean? Swear, what, swear yes, each what, other. What do you say when you take your vows? Um, we do you? Are you waiting to be married? Are you waiting to be married? You say. Yes, I yes, do. Yes, I do. If you're the groom, you say, Yes, I do. Or, no, I don't. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Now, at this point, there's something that we need, isn't there, Shirley? <clears throat> something that we need. Exactly. Two questions. 
who carries the ring? Who wears the ring? Or who carries the rings? Who wears the rings? Priests have to carry the rings. No. 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 In, in, in this country, the priest doesn't carry the rings. Who carries the rings? No, not the bride, mate, but good guess. Right. Priest. No, not the bride, definitely the bride. No, no, no. Priest, no, no. The bride would, no, no. Yes, exactly. Yes. Is that the same as, do, do you have an equivalent? In China, the best man, the bridesmaid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. no. Yeah. We, we have to start about this. They do not carry the rings. They don't yes. carry the, the bride and groom carry the rings and they exchange the rings. Okay. okay. So what's, what's, what's the relationship, generally, the relationship between the bride and the bridesmaid is usually just very good friends. Yeah. yeah. Same in China. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The relationship between the groom and the best man. Yes. Yeah. Good friends. Yes. Same in China. Yes. Yeah. Same. Is it possible for the? Sorry, Ivy. And uh, the uh, bridesmaid and the best man, they are often not married. Yeah, they're not married. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I have been a best man. And <laughs> where? <laughs> best man. Just show us the video. <laughs> I'll show you a photograph if you like. Mm. I will, I'll show you a photograph if you like. Oh, okay. After, after. <laughs> So, uh, who carries the rings? The best man. Who wears the rings? Oh, exactly. So we're taking our vows. The bride and groom are taking their vows. What do we need? We need. So the best man steps forward, and then disaster. <gasps> Shelly, tell us that again. The rings. The rings had fallen down to the river, uh, okay. to the to the swimming pool. Okay, so let's be very strict. Let's. What tense are we talking about? What's our tense? Past. Past yes. tense. Because I'm I'm telling you all of this in present tense. Yes. Isn't it? When I talk about a video or a film or a story, present continuous tense. Sometimes present continuous, but generally just simple present tense. Yes. Simple I said to you. The best man steps forward and then disaster. What was my word? Happens. 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 I didn't say happens, did I? I said disaster strikes. Disaster strikes. Strikes. The best man steps forward Depth. Forward. and then disaster strikes this was an excellent guess from Shelley what did you say say it again Shelley the rings falls in, uh, fall into the pool oh, it's a great guess but do you think the rings just on their own just on their own mm -hmm. no on their own no 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 with the, with the, the best, best man. man. Oh, okay, so change the verb. Change the verb. The best man. Fell into the swimming pool with the rings. But fall is intransitive. Fell. You can't fall something. You can't fall something. Throw. 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 Remember Mr. W in the flower pot? He Throw. throws the flower pot. Uh -huh. He throws himself for us. Uh, Mr. W is a reference to one of his other classes. Great one. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a really interesting thing because it also it also proves how um, <clears throat> you can get. This is the kind of magic of storytelling that you know he mentions Mr. W, who's the main character from that story, mm -hmm. and he's saying, "Oh, remember Mr. W?" to get them to think and correct a language point, which is linked to that lesson. Mm -hmm. So you know that's that's sort of the magic of it, isn't it? That engagement. Mm -hmm. Of, oh, the interesting thing about that is Mr. W, but they learned a language point from it. 
And you say, remember, Mr. W? Call back. <clears throat> so is that the verb? Say it again, Shelley. Drop into the bestman drops into the pool with the ring. Excellent. After me, the best man. The best man, the best man drops the rings. Drops, drops the, the rings into the pool. Into the pool. The best man drops the rings into the pool. The best man drops the rings into the pool. One more time. Best man drops the rings into the pool. The best man drops the rings into the pool. Into the pool. Right, that's quite cold, Shelley. That's quite cold. Let's make it hotter. Let's make it hotter. Yes, disaster. Nobody dies. A dolphin. A dolphin. I love it. A dolphin. You think the dolphin jumps? Preposition jumps. Out. Out. A bomb. A bomb. Of water. 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 And. The ring is in the house. The ring is in the house. I love it. It's so creative. It reminds me of. Yeah. It reminds he, me of reading a book with um you know, <laughs> with my boys uh because they they just like uh, I'll say something I'm like oh what do you think happened and he would like okay so uh do you know like I showed the potato bowels book do you know where he's they're on the boat and I'm like oh what do you think happens next and they're like well aliens come down <laughs> and they 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 throw cheese at people <laughs> <laughs> like and you're like he's like does that is that the most likely thing to happen and they're like yeah i thought of it because <laughs> ob so obviously that's what's gonna happen <laughs> yeah and i mean those kind of out there things they're so great and i think that's one of the reasons why jamie is jumping on that because I, I think that's unlikely to be what actually happens in the story <laughs> but because it's so memorable and creative he's rewarding it yeah and uh and, and he's kind of running with it and getting some emergent language out of it yeah. and uh i'm totally all for that especially when it comes to teens and adults where the creativity is often being drilled out of them by the stigmatization of mistakes yep. in um, kind of standard classroom teaching. And here you're kind of deprogramming that. Um, and, you know, I don't know how long he's had these students for, but the fact that he's, there seem to be a room of Chinese students, which if anything, can, I think the Chinese education system is, is sort of more Victorian in the way that they do things where, mm -hmm. you know, the creativity really is, kind of uh, crushed out of people uh and you can see that he's kind of made up there that one of his students has caught with the idea of a, a dolphin <laughs> catching the ring or whatever and then presenting it to them and i would be as well i i can can i can attest to the victorian ideals of uh chinese education system um so you know the, it reminds me of stuff that i would do, do you know i would always reward <clears throat> A creative out there answers or even answers that are just kind of a little bit just ones that are funny or just to kind of like show that even if it's wrong it's it still can be of value you know mm. okay yeah well we're not even got to the video yet <laughs> <laughs> okay so you think the dolphin jumps out of the water and steals the rings and wears them on his nose? No, no, not a, not a, not a steal. Help me to pick up the rings out of the water until you get to the to the to the That's a story. That's not a That's not a disaster. Oh, not a disaster. The dolphin snatch away the rain from the best man. <laughs> <laughs> so the dolphin, sorry, didn't they say it again? It's swallowed. Everybody, the dolphin, the dolphin jumps out the water. The dolphin jumps out of the water and snatches the rings. And then snatches the rings. The dolphin jumps out of the water. The dolphin jumps out of the water and steals the rings. And steals the rings. Mm, that's a good guess. 
Yeah. What was the other verb that Ding Ding said? You said slash. Swallow. 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 The dolphin Swallow. jumps out of the water. The dolphin jumps out the water. And swallows the ring. And swallows the ring. Is this a new word for everybody? No. 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 Is it a new no. word? No. no. How about this one? Grab. No. Catch. Just catch. Yeah. 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 No. Catch. Yeah. Look, Take something catch. quickly. If I throw it to you, you catch it. Yes. Grab. Yes. Grab or snatch. <laughs> yeah. Because if the, if you catch something, it implies that that thing is moving. You see? Do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah. If you catch something, it implies that that thing is moving. What do police do? Police catch the thieves. Yes, because the police, because the thieves are running. Exactly, running away. Yes. So, a do so perhaps the best man drops the rings and the dolphin. Catch. Jumps, jumps out, out of the water and catches catches fame. Okay, that's very, very cold. That's very, very cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing to do with the story. <laughs> So um, I think we could maybe make we could a, spin on a little bit there. as well. As <clears throat> well, no, 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 no. I think I think. Unless unless we're in a particular rush, I, th I, th I think we, he's probably going to get to the point now. Oh, okay, uh, but. I just I did find that really interesting that you know he's gone on like a six seven minute tangent there, mm -hmm. and you know I think a newish teacher might look at that and be a bit confused about that. Why would you do that if it was not it wasn't in your lesson plan? Mm -hmm. But the point is it's emergent language mm -hmm. with a creative point and all of that stuff he's just done. It's got quite a high chance of sticking mm -hmm. with uh, a good degree of the students. Mm -hmm. So you know when a student comes up with something really creative or even more so personal experience in class, it's well worth doing some emergent language work with that. And I think that was a good example that we just saw there from, from Jamie of doing that. That's an excellent point. Um, the only issue that I have with it, and, and this is it's not really an issue, it's more a, a question for, for Jamie, is time management in the class. Do you know, like how, do you know, like, so, so he's let that spin on for, you know, five minutes or, you know, a, a good chunk of time. So when we, you know, when we do lesson plans per CELTA or what have you, it's all got to be done down to the minute, right? So how is he kind of in his head dealing with the progress in time? I kind of feel like he's got a, 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 a a chunk loaded at the beginning and I think uh, if the time starts to run out my presumption is that he can just kind of spin into the video and be like that's kind of like the the end that he can pull out at any point but he's happy to kind of explore areas within a framework I, you know, I think this is a question more for for Jamie but it would be interesting to see what his response would be yeah. uh, I, I would I would say that you could you could justify it a variety of different ways. Either you've got a clock in your head, mm -hmm. or you're just saying, "Well, it's good language work, so who gives a damn?" And maybe the the whole, you know, it'd be an argument against sort of the very formulaic, structured uh, lesson plan style system, which we did get a bit of a critique from that from uh, was it John John K? Yeah, it? is that yeah. his name? Yeah, the the the, the poet guy. He he wasn't keen on uh, people kind of being glued to lesson plans whatsoever. Uh, but anyway, yeah, let's let's uh, let's get on with it. <laughs> the best man knocks uh, down some people and then rings uh, goes away. The rings <laughs> roll away. Yeah. They roll away. The rings roll away. <laughs> away. Yeah, I think you're right. We should spin on because it's more emergent language stuff. This, I think, isn't it? So let's go on. Da, 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 da. Oh, do we actually get the video in this? Yeah, oh, we, we do. do right, we do. right at the end. Okay. Yeah. And I'll just go to about here and okay. see what he's talking about there. Your clothes are on. Your clothes are off. The bright, bright dress is ripped. <laughs> <laughs> the bride's dress is ripped off. Oh, dear. <laughs> 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 
Maggie turns up and walks into the waiting room. <laughs> okay, this is really good. This is really, really good. We're almost there. We're almost there. I think some people here are tired. Am I right? No, no. 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 So the 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 the. the, the <laughs> wow, it's great to ask your students if they're tired and then they come back and say, no, we're excited. Yeah, we really Jesus, want to see the video. <laughs> I was just about to say, I wish my students would do that. <laughs> yeah. If I ever ask them that they're tired, they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm tired. He's, he, he's, he's doing that thing, isn't it? Um, what What is it? You know, It's a sex term, uh, you know, where you prevent someone from climaxing and you kind of hold it at that level. That kind of, that's what he's doing, but he's doing it with <laughs> Uh, you know, what do you call that? Uh, edging, uh, tan edging. Tan that's tan what, tan what it's called. Edging. Yeah. Yeah. Can we say that? Just PG. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> Story I'm gonna, I'm gonna refer you back to our pornographic intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who came up with that idea? I think anyway. it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> In the best man, the best man belongs to her. Belongs to her. Okay. Exactly, the groom. Well done. Would you like to see the answer? Yeah. yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Chloe, will you have Keith to be your wedded husband? To live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? The rings, please. Oh, oh God! Oh, 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 oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Yeah, uh, all of that lesson for that just really short clip. Um, but, you know, like what, how excited were those students and how, how, how much did he elicit from them and get them to engage and create and use language? It was just, you know, it's wonderful to watch. And, you know, I, I find it entertaining. I could just watch those classes, you know, rather than putting something up on Netflix, to be honest. I'm actually amazed that the whole point that we were making before we watched that about how it's not really about the story and the story can be anything and all the rest of it. And then that's basically what we got an example of. I mean, it's just a silly little short video where something kind of am amusing happens, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's pretty basic what happens. You could tell, I mean, you could tell that story in like 10 seconds, couldn't you? Yeah. You know, and someone would be like, ha ha. Okay. But it's like being turned, it's been turned into a 25 minute um, section of a class there, possibly with, well, there will definitely be something that happens after that. And that's why I don't it's a shame think we haven't got that. It's a shame we haven't that, got that, that, that. that important, mm -hmm. really, uh, with the authentic material, with the image or the, 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 the video or whatever story that he's using it's not kind of for me it's not really that important it's the dialogic mm -hmm. aspect of uh, the the and i see what you mean with storytelling that the the idea and we don't, i don't think dialogic teaching or style storytelling really captures it. it's really about the way that he utilizes language to create engagement uh, and you know uh, that hook, that emotion, uh, and yeah, to to deepen the students' um, involvement in the class. Mm, that's it. Yeah, it's all about that effective depth. Yes. Like you want those emotional reactions, and that's why he jumped on the the dolphin thing so much because that image of a dolphin jumping up and stealing the rings will be glued into people's minds. I mean you'll be able to ask them a year later. Mm -hmm. Oh, do, I mean, because you could say to them, oh, do you remember studying the present perfect with Jamie Cuddy? No. Do you remember the dolphin that stole the ring? Oh, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. 
Jordan. Of course. People you never missed the W. That. I'm, yeah. I'm going to remember it. Yeah, exactly. It's like what he says with this. Oh, remember this Mr. W uh, to, to prompt the language point. And, you know, Jamie recognizes that, that, that part, that that's um, critical. Uh, and a lot of and, the way um, that he talks that reminds there. me of a uh, stand-up comedy <clears throat> as well. Do you know, like the, the way that he's, uh structures his instructions mm. and structures how he speaks uh during the class you know there's always kind of like that setup punchline setup punchline kind of like the the <clears throat> a, a one two uh it's very interesting and uh, i yeah. would absolutely love to watch uh go through one of his video telling uh sorry storytelling learning courses uh and when i have the money i, I mm. definitely will invest in that and you can invest in uh, those courses and you can get all these lessons from Jamie at lessonstream.com or just have a search for Jamie Keddy uh, and I'll put it in the links below uh, on Google and you can find and sign up with him or yeah. just reach out to him to directly super approachable one thing I'm going to put to you Rich and I want you to give me a rebuttal I'm an invigilator uh, I, I'm a person that's working for an institution and this institution, these people, they've got to learn English. Um, they've got to do it for their visa and stuff like that. Um, that they don't seem to be learning anything there, Rich. They're, I mean, they are kind of learning something, but you know, how is this all connected? How is this helping them, you know, get their English level better? You know, why shouldn't they be doing, you know, gap fill exercises? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's where, that's where things can get interesting, can't they? Because I think you can you can easily give a very strong rationale for this about how it's improving people's English. Mm -hmm. You have um, all of this vocabulary learning going on. You've got all of this dialogic stuff going on. The students are interacting. They're engaged. They're remembering stuff. Um, we have a part of the class that we haven't seen yet, which almost certainly will be more of a kind of production stage, mm -hmm. um, you know, because these stories are then followed by something else where, you know, the, the, the students will have to produce something themselves, some kind of discussion, some story, some uh, writing, something. Um, so we are going to have that opportunity. Uh, there may even be some language analysis other than the emergent language that is just done mm -hmm. um, post, after, the, after the story as well. And of course, that language is so strongly embedded in their minds because of the, the kind of deep uh, emotional connection that they have with this kind of interesting story and interesting style. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I'll rationalize all day about, about why this would be more useful for language learning. However, the point, if you're making a point about exams, that's when we get into issues, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because then your, the, your method has to come up against the rationale of the exam. And uh, as I you know, said to you before we start recording, this is something affecting me personally at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I think my colleague and friend, Anthony Hawking is gonna come and talk to us about. Don't know whether that video is gonna already be up by now or whether it's gonna come after this, <laughs> but um, you know, he's, he's, gonna, he's probably gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, and it's a problem, a massive problem that teachers have to deal with and can you use dialogic storytelling um, in a class that is kneecapped by a need to get students through an exam? 100% you can. <clears throat> I do. So you totally can. I think it would be unfair for us to judge this particular video mm -hmm. uh, of, of Jamie on, on, that, um, on that kind of condition because we don't know whether this was an exam prep class it might just be a general english class um but you 100 percent can direct things in that in that way um and it's it's you got you're getting into the thing then of there being a balance of mm -hmm. <clears throat> you 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 have to balance as a teacher how much you're just going to aim at the exam and how much you're going to use what you know to be the correct way of teaching people mm -hmm. And I'm someone who very much veers on the side of the correct way of teaching people. Mm -hmm. um, whereas the safe thing to do is to veer on the exam side and get your 100% pass rate. And then obviously if you're a teacher who's, who's teaching an exam class, mm -hmm. then 
that is the primary metric by which you are judged, unfortunately. Yeah. And when uh, whereas... you say the correct way of teaching, um, <clears throat> you mean the most proven effective way for someone to improve their language ability well uh because you know would, correct I, is yeah i know what you mean yeah, yeah. I, I would put it as a bit more subjective than that mm -hmm. because you know one of the things i did want to say is that there's a there are a number of things that i would do quite differently to how jamie did it there mm -hmm. and i recognize that to some extent it comes down to personal styles. We're not going, we're not, we shouldn't be going out there and prescribing how people are teaching. I don't mm -hmm. think anyone would say that. I don't think anyone respectable would say that that's what we should do. Mm -hmm. I certainly don't think that that's what Jamie Keddy would say. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he was, he will quite happily accept that there's teachers out there who don't want to tell stories, you mm -hmm. know, which is totally antithetical to his uh, methodology in a way, but mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's fine. And uh, you know, in my, for me, when I say the best way of teaching, I mean, the teacher's call. The teacher is the one who should make that call as much as possible. I mean, my, my, in an ideal world, if we're speaking, speaking kind of platonically here, mm -hmm. then the ultimate language learning institution, in my opinion, would be a language learning institution with kind of very skeletal uh, frameworks of um, the sort of different language learning levels. Mm -hmm. And then just these really great experienced teachers who can just work with that in whatever way that they want. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to have some sort of framework for some kind of assessment as well. So you knew that stuff was actually going on. People were actually making progress, mm -hmm. you know, whether that's core rated coursework or whatever. And of course that would provide a, a massive administrative, administrative challenge mm -hmm. and marketing challenge as well. Mm -hmm. How the hell do you market that? You just say, Oh, we're just the best. You yeah. Know, we just got all the, we just got all the best teachers. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but what they're going to learn, right? It's really, so, so that's the reason why that that kind of is that kind of institution is doesn't exist, or mm -hmm. if it does exist, but, you know, people talk to me about education systems in Finland and stuff like that, and they say it's kind of and Denmark have apparently it's kind of a bit like that. I I, I don't know. Um, I've only just I've just heard from people saying that it's really good, mm -hmm. but I, I I don't know. I don't have any personal experience with it. I haven't investigated it, mm -hmm. so I don't know if those kind of institutions do exist. But in the ideal world, that would be my case, and then I would say that it should be the teachers <clears throat> who are making those decisions about um, about the scheme of work. So that the scheme of work is personalised by the teacher uh, as they go as well. I would I certainly wouldn't expect my teachers to produce um, you know a three a three month scheme of work ahead of time. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, um, it's not the way that I teach either. I'm very much a kind of a, what am I into at the moment? You know, what am I, what am I passionate about right now? That's what I'm going to make a lesson on. Mm -hmm. Right. So like we've just been talking about exams. I did a, I did a lesson on exams two weeks ago that I made because it was all going through my head about ups and the down, literally a la lesson on the pros and cons of exams. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Cause that's what I felt at the time. That's what mm -hmm. I felt was interesting. And I knew I could make that interesting to the students because mm -hmm. obviously it speaks to them as well because mm -hmm. they know about exams. They know what pain exams are, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also interesting to talk about well, why do exams exist? Why do we mm -hmm. use them all the time? You know, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of stuff you can go into. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to give, teachers that that um flexibility and then what i would say is it would be ideal to have a system whereby students can kind of float between teachers mm -hmm. um so you know the, the, there might be students that kind of do a couple of lessons with you know jamie and get the storyteller thing and then they do a couple of lessons with um Scott Thornbury and get some dogma or whatever. <laughs> I, mean, I can't, can't imagine what institution this is that employs uh, Jamie Keddy and Scott Thornbury as teachers. But um, let's imagine that there was such a thing, you know. And then what you'll Hogwarts. eventually get, you'll get the, the, yeah, right? You'll get the teachers, you'll get the students that you know really click with a certain way of learning, kind of going and getting that. And, and maybe occasionally dipping into some others' mm -hmm. styles as well, mm -hmm. you know. And and I, I think that is the way things should be done, where, 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 where teachers kind of become, uh, you know, more than just a robot uh, kind of formed to teach what the institution wants. Instead, the teacher becomes a real educator who's, you know, using their experience and knowledge to, to teach in the way that they think is best. And I think that's what appeals most to students. And I see this, um, although, you know, streams are a bad analogy for teaching, but I see this with the live streams I do with Oxford Online English, that um, there's three of us that do the live streams now. Uh, we all have very different styles. 
and you get a crossover of students that go to all three and appreciate the distinction, but then you very much get um, students that just come to one as well. Mm -hmm. Like I've got students that just come to my stream. Carrie's got students who just come to her stream. You know, they found the style that they like. Mm -hmm. And I think that absolutely applies to teaching as well. Mm -hmm. So when I say, what is the best, you know, that you want to be able to teach the best way. And that comes into conflict with uh, teaching to test then um, I don't mean objectively, mm -hmm. like there's this divine way of teaching, but I mean the decision of your experienced and um, professional and qualified teacher. And if you turn around and say, oh, but my teachers aren't capable of doing that, then, well, maybe you need to train them better or pay them more or find some better teachers. Mm -hmm. Because in my opinion, like someone who's just going through the motions and, and like, uh, and kind of teaching robotically, that's, that's really a, a very, a very uh, poor representation of what a teacher can be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I totally see w what you're saying there. So it's like institutions that their focus is just <clears throat> on, uh, what we teach and, you know, uh, maybe providing materials on how they want you to teach that, uh, what, what they teach, uh, what they want you to teach. Um, but there's less focus on how you teach. And I think, you know, Jamie is a great illustration of, uh, learning delivery, uh, of materials, uh, making that, uh, engaging and making it digestible and, you know, something that students don't just want to learn but they crave it you know, it's it's so good um and i think it we start we start to veer into teaching not just being uh, a profession but in many ways an art there's an art to delivering a lesson and there are many ways to do that and the more ways that you have in your tool belt to um to implement and deliver a class uh, the the more ways that you have to reach different students because you know you might go to one country and they might like story you know dialogic storytelling you might go to another country they might like task-based learning but if you have all of these then one you can adapt to the students but two you can inform your own teaching style more and then lean in lean into that and one of the things that I'm really proud of uh, that we do with ELT under the covers, we cover this a broad spectrum of teaching methodology. Um, and I feel like we, we do help fill a gap, <laughs> pardon the pun, uh, <laughs> not really a pun. Uh, we fill the gap um, that's left by institutions uh, and, you know, I can't really speak to the PGC or, you know, qualified teacher courses um that are run by the public institutions you know where they go over methodology of teaching but i feel that the way especially with language teaching we present a really broad spectrum of ways mm. that you can you can do that and with different methodologies and you know the interviewees yeah. that we have on uh present you know different delivery systems that you can listen to learn and adapt and utilize in your classrooms and i i yeah, yeah i'm really proud of that uh, that, that we do um yeah i think i think there is a lot of misused i don't i don't really know if this is the right way of explaining it but there's a lot of sort of misused common sense mm -hmm. when it comes to people thinking about what it is to be a teacher and even applying it to the names of methodologies as well. Mm -hmm. And so for example, uh, you know, we've kind of touched on the idea that when you say task-based learning to someone, they're like, Oh yeah, task-based learning. I know that I do that. And then what you actually find is that they do tasks in class and they think that's task-based learning and, you know, a similar thing of like, Oh, using stories in class. Oh yeah. I use stories in class, right? Oh, dialogic storytelling. Yeah. I do that all the time, you know, but really they don't actually know, you know, if you watch, what Jamie's doing, this it's it's quite specific. It's not just using a story, you know. There's 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 sort of more to it than that. And um, and I think we we get this kind of weird situation where, and we see it in sort of popular media as well. This kind of icon of of, of a teacher, this kind of general sort of talk, chalk and talk styley thing going yeah. on. Um, we kind of 
always seems to gravitate towards that, especially with big institutions, you know, with state school education and so on. Uh, it always seems to kind of get pulled into that uh, chalk and talk mentality. And I, I think, honestly, <clears throat> I think people really, um, they, they, they sometimes do mental gymnastics to try and get the the rationale to fit the institution mm -hmm. yeah you know and this is this is just kind of a, a, a it's really a, it, for me i'm i'm talking from my intuition here i don't I, I can't really back this up with evidence other than it's kind of what i see and what i feel happens mm -hmm. you know and i'll give you just one example of that you know i heard recently um about how um they started to say, uh, "Don't don't bother with differentiation, because um, you know we've got some we got some studies come up that basically says that it makes absolutely no difference to uh, learners' achievement." <clears throat> you know, and um, you know my inclination from hearing that, and this is this is where this is where science can be a little bit problematic sometimes, mm -hmm. because you know I've I have my I have my own experience and examples of things happening as a teacher mm -hmm. where I just 100% know that differ differentiation not only can be helpful, but it's absolutely critical sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like you will just have students that are totally lost mm -hmm. if you don't differentiate in a language learning classroom, mm -hmm. you know, and you'll have students that are totally bored, you know. So I know that it's critical. Mm -hmm. But that is obviously, that's what a scientist would call anecd anecdotal evidence mm -hmm. because it's, that's what it is. It's just me, my experience. Mm -hmm. And my experience is not going to stand up against even a poorly done study mm -hmm. because, you know, I'd have all kinds of questions about a study. Like how, how do they measure that? Like, how do you, how do you measure what someone's learned in the class? Cause that's problematic, mm -hmm. you know, and how, what kind of differentiation was it? What kind of class was it? Cause they didn't even say it was a language class, mm -hmm. you know? So, it, it, but it was the point that basically this study had come up, which allowed the institution to kind of close down the, the sort of freedom that a teacher has and push them into sort of, no, come on, let's just, uh, let's keep it simple. You know, we just, we've got our one worksheet. We don't need to make a special extra one for the, for the higher achievers or, you know, a special, mm -hmm. um, you know, easier one for people who can't manage it. You know, so it's like for them to hear, you know, it's like music to their ears to hear, oh, there's a study that supports the fact that differentiation is ineffective. Oh, we can get rid of that. Yeah. You know, wouldn't they love it if it's for any study that comes out and um, and and talks about how 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 useful it is for students to have exams and how how useful it is to give them grammar worksheets? Because it just makes it just makes everything so easy to get all your get all your teachers in line and not have to worry about complicated things like teacher training and you know having good educators and stuff like that yeah um, i think i'm going a little bit off there but yeah i think it, it, all of that kind of idea is sort of connected to what we were talking about and sort of our our mission in a way isn't it yeah uh i think like it's one of the issues um especially that you you mentioned with you know like oh now we have this new study that's come along that says that you know you know, that differentiation is is not necessary um but you know we you know this the the range of studies and how well they are done and you know the different degrees of um uh validity is, is often difficult for many people to uh discern and uh you know it, i think that's why it's risky and i think uh, to kind of go a bit broader, that's probably one of the issues that we had um, during during COVID was lots of studies coming out, you know, saying that, uh, you know, it's the virus is really bad. Some saying the virus is not so bad, you know, uh, and really it's it's all very kind of new um, and hardly conclusive you can't be conclusive but i'm just like on one study or even like 10 studies that uh are you know kind of they're going to be rushed together because of it, it being new and novel so you do have to refer back to kind of the 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 longer um 
deeper levels of just you know less focus on covid more focus on just you know virology uh, and go with that and i kind of mm. think it's similar with teaching uh so i'm always kind of a little bit you know when we they when we talk about the elt space language teaching space and there's a new study that shows this or this i'm like well that's this one <clears throat> study but let's look at all the bank of information yeah. that we've got before and when i when i refer to you as correct teaching uh i think uh, my in my estimation what i'm referring back to is all this history that we have that we've gone through on this channel where we've gone through all the different teaching methodologies that have led to the accumulative conclusion that communicative language teaching is the most effective yet you know it still gets banded around that it, you know uh that we should be more prescriptive we're still stuck in these institutions where they want it to just be chalk and talk and you know go through the workbook but <laughs> it's just it's constantly shown but and uh reinforced mm. that it, it's 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 <clears throat> not it's not the way it's not the way um so yeah, it's amazing really yeah, yeah. but it, it time takes it takes a long time for these things to change i think and you know we just got to keep pushing forward um and reinforcing and showing people like jemmy uh, jemmy jamie doing their thing and how effective it can be um and you know over the course of time it will change you know the galileo got <laughs> got mocked and uh, i don't know if he was beat up or killed i can't remember um you know for saying the world is round but you know eventually everyone agreed on that and now we're taking a step back a little bit but <laughs> i think you know, it'll <laughs> we will we will get rid of the fat flat earthers probably <laughs> well there's a there's a there's a there's a thing about this and there's a quote about this where uh people have started to come out and say the science is never settled and that's the point yeah that's the point when, of when science. people say the science is settled that's yeah that's not science <laughs> that's but not you, how science it's not yeah. how science works yeah what it is is you have a strong theory that's backed up by your you know studies and your current level of understanding and then at some point you realize that that's not the full picture or it's wrong or the model's wrong or something. Yeah. That's always what happens. It's history has shown it again and again and again and again. Yeah. So we have to be willing to always question how our assumptions, uh, but we're, go we're going a little bit off, off, off rails there, but yeah, the, the point is, um, well, the point is it's more, it's more complicated than just saying, this is how we should do things. Yeah. Uh, and my, my point was, I'd love to, I'd love for there to be a, a, an institution where teachers have more autonomy in how they can educate. And that institution is ELT under the covers where <laughs> we give you all the options uh, for that autonomy and you can pick Maybe one choose. day we'll have like an you academy, can... ELT, Ooh. UTC, where people come and learn, you know, philosophy or psychology or whatever. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. We'll start crowdsourcing. Uh, I'll I'll put a link below. And uh, once we reach uh, a billion, a billion, a billion, <laughs> a billion I'm then gonna we, I'm gonna I'm buy, gonna jog on can, a rocket to the Mars or something. <laughs> then, then we can buy uh, we can buy the uh, Ario Ario uh, Pagitica in uh, in Athens. Yes. And build build a new uh, academy of yeah. education. Yeah. So. Um, Back to back to Jamie. If you are wanting to get more information uh, about uh, video telling, dialogic storytelling, uh, as Jamie uses, then I would go to Lesson Stream. Stream is in River. Lessonstream.com, or just search for Jamie Keddy. That's J A M I E. Keddy, K-E-D-D-I-E. -E. He always ends with an I-E. Uh, Jam, I-E, Ked, I-E, etc. Um, it's his brand, what can I say? Uh, currently, he's <laughs> touring with Kings of Leon, but I, I believe he will be back uh, to the teaching soon enough. And if you're wanting uh, more information with Jamie uh, in relation to ourselves, we do have a previous video that we have 
with Jamie Keddy, uh, where he kind of goes over his background a little bit more, and I'll put a link to that below. If you're looking for more information uh, from myself, uh, you can go to teamteacherchina.com. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of materials, PowerPoints that you can use instantly in the classroom. We've got a Team Teacher China YouTube channel where we have videos teaching you how to use those uh, materials. Team Teacher English, where we put those materials into a, a video form for self study. And Team Teacher Baby, where I take my experience as a teacher and put that into parenting. And go to YouTube to come Professor Rich to see some English teaching. You can catch me weekly live streams on Oxford Online English YouTube channel. Oh, and also you can you can do a YouTube search for POG Space UK and you would get my alpha version of my new gaming channel, which actually just have some trial content on there at the moment. You can email us here at ELT under the covers at gmail.com if you have anything you'd like to contribute to the show. Smash that like button, share yeah. and subscribe. And, and watch 100% of the video and don't exactly. click off. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.